Good morning. It is garden tour time again. Time to take a look at what's growing, what's not growing in our garden. Um, it's definitely going to be more of, I think, of a cleanup <laughs> video today. There's a lot of things that I need to work on clean up in our video. Well, not in our video, but in the garden. Um, so I might do that with you guys. We'll see in a little bit. Um, just a lot of dead stuff that needs to come out. End of the season I, I stuff. Added. The summer season has peaked and gone, and so we've taken out some stuff. And but the fall garden is growing, so that's pretty exciting. So let's look at what's growing. Look at that, pretty. <laughs> yep, she's wearing the same clothes as last week. In case you didn't notice, she loves that outfit. Anyway, our zinnias are still going strong. Pretty exciting about that. I did harvest some seeds from them this week. Our basil, all of it got a haircut this week because it was huge and I harvested like two gallons worth of basil. Put it in my freezer. Ugh. Getting more jungly in there. We've harvested a few more tomatoes, but they're definitely not looking amazing anymore. Oh, big spider. Spider web. Um, I think we might be getting some peppers on these guys. There's at least blossoms, so maybe like cooler temperatures will help them set some fruit. It has definitely been a lot cooler the last week or so and this week is supposed to also be cooler 80s you know instead of 90s to 100s so that's pretty nice. Cherry tomatoes there's still some on there but they're getting smaller and yeah sometimes I wonder if it's worthwhile to pick. These guys are still going to seed. My lettuce little plant. Um, I think I've picked all the peppers off of my King in the North peppers, just waiting for them to maybe do another batch. We'll see. Um, okay, I got this all weeded. Maybe I showed you this last week. No, I don't remember if I did. Anyway, got this whole row weeded, which makes it look much better. Just have some weeds trying to break down on there or re sprout like here. <laughs> I'm trying to sprout again, guys. Anyway. So there's not really much looking there. These flowers, they're still nice and bushy and beautiful. But blanos are still going crazy. I probably should like get a steak for this because it's kind of leaning a little bit. So I figured out when to harvest my carrot seeds. Basically, I think it's soon. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but all the little carrots are in there. Little carrot seeds, little brown dots. My camera can see the brown dots. Yeah, are you vlogging too? Yeah. Oh, good. So anyway, it starts out with the little f flower thingy, then it turns to this. So that's pretty cool. I did not know that. That tomato is still doing okay. That tomato died. This tomato looks like it's still growing. This flower patch it needs a little pruning because it's a little crazy. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you what we actually planted in here, in this whole row. We planted dry beans. I was like, oh, just plant some dry beans and all the empty spots and, you know, cover crop basically. So that's what might grow in there. We just planted them a couple days ago, so it's not quite time for them. This bush, I think, needs to be taken down, trimmed, whatever. A bunch of the sunflowers need to be trimmed and harvested for seeds. Hmm. Oh yeah, I guess I did take that guy off. I mean, this guy, he's just a stalk, but that's fine. Um, but like, see this guy, he probably can be harvested for seed, I think. Um, got our pole beans growing here at the bottom. Pretty exciting. We do still have some nice looking sunflowers. They're not as beautiful as they once were, but they're still pretty beautiful. Some of them are just not very beautiful at all. This guy I probably should pick too. He looks pretty ready. Some of our carrots are sprouting back up. Guys, I did so much weeding in here this week. It's crazy. So much empty space, basically. So these carrots are re-sprouting. I cleared out the melons to make them look a little bit better so I could actually find them because I lost one last week because I couldn't see it. Um, so we have a bunch of cantaloupes over here. And they're probably almost ready. I mean, this guy over here might actually be ready. Man, I'm gonna munch that guy. So I just told Nathan one day, I haven't seen the animal in our garden recently go out there he had snagged the butternut squash that was propped up on my trellis it was like two feet off the ground and he snagged it and it's gone and munched that cantaloupe as well I was like mmm that little booger so our zucchini is still growing over there on the little mound 
cleared out a lot of these vines because they were just bleh, yuck. The pumpkin is still trying to ripen down there. Got a watermelon there. You know, some more fruit over there. These cantaloupe are seeming to do pretty well. Our the zucchini that I planted in the fall is not doing so well. There's one buttercup squash that looks okay. It might be the only one that actually looks okay. Cause that one died. Oh, there's one down there that looks good. We'll come back to that spot. So, this big guy. Anna, guess what? Is he ripe? He's ripe. Okay, we can pick him on camera today. We can show you our biggest watermelon and I'll tell you how much it weighs. I'll put it on the screen after we weigh it. So, how many pounds do you think this is? So let me know down in the comments. Ah. There we go. I don't even know if I can lift it. Can you hold my camera and see if I can lift it? Don't drop my camera, okay? Ooh! Big baby! Woo! Look at this big, big baby. Woo! I would guess probably 25 pounds, maybe. It's eumunk. Woo! Maybe I'd even say 27 pounds. Hmm. Let me know what your guess is, because I'm really curious to know. I'll put it on the screen later. Do so you have time to guess down in the comments? How many pounds do you think this watermelon is? What's your guess on the watermelon? Six pounds. You think it's only six pounds? Mm -hmm. The one we picked the other day was 15. Now it's bigger. Still six? Okay. It's still six. We still have some honeydew that are ripening in here. We picked that big watermelon that was in here. And it was 15 pounds. Our strawberries are having this weird problem where part of them are just dying. So if you know what that is, let me know, cause it's something I can fix. I would love to fix it. I don't know. Um, green beans are doing well, starting to produce. We've picked a bunch from them this week. Corn is very close to harvesting and I think we'll probably harvest some this week. Like this ear here is almost ready and there's a few on the other side. They're almost ready. Um, I did spray it with BT this week. Hopefully that will help it not be bad and wormy. We have some kind of random melon growing down in here. Ta da! I don't know what kind it is. This pepper plant that I planted from store peppers, I think, is starting to set flowers. So that's encouraging. The honeydew. I don't remember if I said this last week, but the honeydew has been really good this year. It's almost like a cross between a honeydew and a cantaloupe, or they're just like super ripe, and it's been really good. So I've been enjoying them and waiting for these guys to get ripe. Pretty excited about that. I took out the cucumbers because we were getting pickle worms. Yucky. Plus they just weren't very good, so I took them out. We'll plant onions in here in a little bit. Cantaloupe needs to come out today. Yeah, because again, the pickle worms are coming, so they're pretty nasty and just destroyed in this. Vine is pretty much done anyway. Um, that little buttercup squash there died. The sturtiums are still looking nice down under there. The pumpkins that I planted over here are looking good. I think something munched this guy a little bit, maybe. But come on, little guy, you can do it. Peanuts? Okay, so this is super cool, guys. I have only read about what peanuts are supposed to do. But if you look down in there, see those pokey downy things? That is what is going to produce the peanut. Like, it's going to go down in there, and it's going to make the peanut underground. So I'm super excited to see that. Let me show you. We had a little baby. Little baby cantaloupe over here. Yeah, no good. That's why I'm ripping out my cantaloupes, because yuck nastiness. Okay, these cantaloupes over here are still doing okay, I think. But they're not producing fruit, so hopefully by the time they produce fruit, the pickle worms will be gone from my garden. But, this guy has a pickle worm. These guys have pickle worms. So we're gonna cut them off. This guy has a pickle worm. So we're gonna cut him off, take that off. Oof, this guy has a pickle worm. Buttercup squash has not done okay this year. Bad. <laughs> I've not really gotten a harvest from them. So taking that whole vine down, I think. Or maybe I'll just take that one off, I don't know yet. Anyway, nope, I'm taking the whole vine because that one has a pickle worm. Blech. They're just nasty. 
And the beans probably have pickle worms too. The what has pickle worms? The beans, you think you still have pickle worms? I don't know, I think the beans are probably okay because the pickle worms don't like beans. Pickle worms like nice, nice things. Maybe I can spray some of them with BT or something, I don't know. This zucchini still looks like it's doing okay. This one, I think had a few bugs on it one day. And so it got all munched. Our little bean patch over here is doing well. This is just the dry bean patch right here. This is Anna's little family of dry beans that she planted. Um, those are just some bush beans up there. Um, so this is my week's project to clear out all the weeds out of here because I think these beans are pole beans. And so they're starting to climb a little bit, I think. Plus just to make it look nicer, nicer in here. Um, so I've started. <laughs> There's six technical sections, so I figure I did one the other night, and I've kind of started on this end a little bit. So if I do one section a day for the rest of this week, I should be done by <laughs> Friday. Hopefully I achieve my goal. Look, there's a little bean plant that grew here in the wood chips. Lots of mushrooms. They're always fun to see. See, look, that side is all done. It looks so nice. So we have a couple butternut squash down in here. Lots of squash bugs, of course, you know. We have a pumpkin there that is almost ripe. Ooh, so many squash bugs. Blech. If you can't tell, I don't really like bugs. Um, squash under there. There's a squash under there. Not that those things really do any good, but you know. There's a pumpkin under here. Again, lots of squash bugs. Um, yeah, I still need to take out more of these vines, but they're hard to tell which ones are actually dead. These ones down here just were easy to tell if they were dead. What can I harvest for my friends? I don't know, but my sweet potatoes today are still good. You're going to harvest something for your friend? Yeah. Which friend? Sweet man. Uh-huh. That's so nice of you. Anyway, hopefully my sweet potatoes actually are producing underneath the ground instead of just making nice beautiful leaves. That would be amazing. I really want to weed them, but I also don't want to weed them. I feel like the groundhog or rabbit will come along and munch them more once I weed it, but I probably should do a little weeding. Beans, still getting a few random guys. But see, look how nasty that looks over there with the corn. Blech. All right, so let's get busy doing a little bit of work. I'll show you as I go. I probably won't like make you watch what I'm doing, but I'll show you what I finished. Now that you've seen what it looks like before I start, then you can see the end result when I'm done. You look so bare now. Really pruned this side really heavily, got all the dead leaves off, took out all the cantaloupe basically because most of it was dead. I feel like the stuff that I left is probably going to die because I probably can cut the connector fine to it, but oh well, I do have more. Right over the there carrots. and down there that hopefully will not be affected by the pickle worms. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory is clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, and what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I've been thinking about this little passage since yesterday at church, and just thinking about how I have wanted to control how much garden stuff comes out of my garden this year, and... Um, I guess worrying when it's not enough enough or the crop fails kind of and this first just reminded me that I don't need to be worried about 
where my next meal is going to come from, where the winter food is going to come from. Just any of that stuff. He cares for the birds and takes care of them and feeds them all that they need. And I am worth much more than a bird. So I don't need to worry about food or clothing or anything like that. Any of the troubles of the world because God knows what I need and will provide for him. Here's a little example of that. Sometimes things don't come on, but God answers what we want. Sometimes God does. What did God answer this time for you? What did he know about your tiny little desires inside your heart? Shoes. What kind of shoes? Rainbow. Rainbow shoes, but what kind of shoes are those? Do you think they are? Chacos. Yeah. How long have you wanted a pair of Chacos? For lots of days. Ever since mommy got hers? Mm -hmm. And God knew that, right? Mm -hmm. And God heard your little desires and he chose to bless you with a pair of shoes from a friend that were your heart's desire. Perfect color and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something simple. Just a pair of shoes. But to this little one, it meant God heard her heart. So what I just need to be doing is seeking first his kingdom and God's righteousness and God will meet my needs. That's what he said. So that's what I'm going to hold on to today. I'm done for right now. Probably does not look very much, but I made it from about, oh, I don't know, right here to that bare spot up there. This is weeded. This is my piles of weeds behind me. I mean, I did make progress. I made it all of, you know, maybe 10 feet, maybe. Still got that far to go. Times five. <laughs> Can you try to lift it? Oh, too heavy? Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'll get it. Oh! Oh, buddy! Oh, buddy, I was right. Look at that. 27.4 pounds. With this figgy watermelon. Hugey! Let's step on it. Anna is having fun weighing all these vegetables, too. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I don't think it's very accurate, but... Yep. I, I can't put this one on. You couldn't put the big watermelon on because it was so heavy. It weighs almost as much as you do. 27.4 pounds. Biggest watermelon I've ever had. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And like, see you next time. Like.